All over California, you can find the remnants of the Gold Rush era. I'm actually standing at one of the largest sites in Southern California, which was one of the most prosperous. However, they still never discovered the mother load vein, which was supposed to bring the most amount of wealth from this entire region. And it's still out there for discovery. California has a deep history of gold. In January 1848, gold was founded by James Marshall in Colma, California. And this news of gold brought approximately 300,000 people to California from the rest of the United States and abroad. These people were called the 49ers because of the boom in 1849. The sudden influx of gold into the money supply reinvigorated American economy and the sudden population increase allowed California to go rapidly into statehood. In 1860, a man by the name of William Holcomb discovered gold by chance when he came into this valley as he was chasing a grizzly bear. And then when he was just resting under a tree, he picked up a piece of quartz and laced inside of it was gold. Now gold is an interesting metal. It's not actually formed here on earth. It's formed when a star collapses, creating a supernova. And then the gold is ejected out into the universe and gold made it here to Earth when the Earth was forming and it sank down into the core. Now from there, it gets pushed out into the mantle and the crust in what's called veins. And that's why when you see gold mines, there are usually a tunnel that's dug through the Earth as they follow this vein of gold. So Holcomb quickly established multiple claims up here in the valley. And as soon as word spread that there was gold, people started flocking up here. By June, there was 300 claims by july there was 500 and by september there was over a thousand people with different claims up here hunting for gold Soon a town was built in this valley called Belleville, which was named after the first child that was born here. But life in this town wasn't easy. The conditions are super harsh. I mean, we came up to film this video, we're in like a crazy windstorm. And so life for the residents here was tough. But this area where I'm standing used to have 10,000 people. There was a full community, a whole town, but all that's left is this one building. And it's so wild to stand here and just think of this being like a massive bustling town and now it's just an empty meadow. So this is the grave of a man named Wilbur and he was a tax assessor here in town. But this grave is important because the town voted him to be the person who would establish the boundaries of who owned which claim. And so he would put rock boundaries around everyone's claim so that the prospectors weren't crossing over into each other's claims. Now this has just become a landmark where off-roaders, mountain bikers, hikers come and they kind of just place random objects all over his grave. It's marked with a ton of pine cones, but then now there's all these other things that are added within like Chick-fil-A packets and there's a Darth Vader and I've found a pineapple. Like, and so it's just become this weird place where people come to add little trinkets and whatnot. So with all the gold that was discovered here in Holcomb's Valley, it was still a short-lived gold rush, and it only lasted about a year. But with all of this new wealth, brought a lot of crime. And by 1862, the town of Belleville had over 50 murders. And this tree was called the hangman's tree because they hung the murderers from these branches. So the vast majority of the claims in Holcomb's Valley were placer gold, which is basically gold that has come off the rock down in fast moving rivers and settles in slow moving water. However, when you go around Holcomb's Valley, you can find gold mines like these, which are just a hole in the ground where they're chasing a vein of gold. 
I'm standing on the edge of this mountain range off in the distance of the Mojave Desert, and you can find gold mines like these all the way down to Joshua Tree. Now when you look around Holcomb's Valley, there's not much left. You have some things like this, which was once a ore grinder, but other than that, everything's gone. The buildings and all of the equipment that was out here has all been taken by vandals or souvenir seekers. And so what we're left with is a few holes in the ground, some rusted metal, and the ghosts of a not so distant past. Now the gold rush may have ended in the 1800s, but there are still over 2000 claims of hobbyist prospectors looking for gold in this region. And if legend is right, well, the mother load of gold is still somewhere in these hills just waiting for someone to stumble upon it.